Hello, everyone, and welcome to Wednesday Night Warrior. I'm Spencer, host of two podcasts about getting better at Magic the Gathering, Constrictor Criticism, and Limited Time Only. And this week, we are doing another Tech Talks. This week, we're doing a Tech Talks on Green Black Aggro. The deck took first, second, and third of the recent SEG Open, so we're going to dive deep and look at the card choices that some of these decks made and why they made them, what what they were looking to get out of it, possibly. We're going to make our best guesses. As I can't get, get really into the minds of the players, but we're going to try. We're going to start with the first place, de- first place deck that is titled Black Green Delirium by Brennan uh, DeCandio. Uh, this deck looks really sweet. I think that calling it Black, Black Green Delirium is a little disingenuous, considering how different it is from the other Black Green Delirium decks that you might yourself have played at recent FNMs or different tournaments. So, you know, when you're looking at this deck list, it definitely has a more aggressive look to it. You know, what you'll see here is you'll see Grim Flares like you did in the old deck, but you'll see four Mind Rack Demon unlike the old decks. And you'll see Winding Constrictor, Rishka Pima, uh, Pima Renegade, and uh, Verderous Gear Hulk. So the deck is trying to go big. It's like a big green deck, uh, being a lot more aggressive, only playing 23 lands. Now, there are some Delirium elements in the deck. You know, you have Walking Ballista and the Verderous Gear Hulk to turn on Delirium pretty easily with your Mind Rack Demons. You have Traverse, Traverse the Uven Walls and Grim Flares that want Delirium in your deck. But one of the things that you'll see in all three of these deck lists, and this is kind of where I wanted to start, is some number of Verders Gear Hulks, some number of Winding Constrictors, and some number of Rishkar Pima Outriders. You'll also see some number of Grasp of Darkness and some number of Fatal Push. These are kind of the key components of the deck that did well this weekend. If we move on to the second place deck list, we have a very beautiful deck in my opinion. This is my favorite deck of the weekend. Um, you know, it looks tuned. It looks like he knew what he wanted. And one of the things that you'll notice is he's playing Glint Sleeve Siphoner. This card, with Winding Constrictor, lets you draw an extra card every turn by attacking. You know, this he does a lot to turn it on better with Rishka Pima Renegade and Verderous Gear Hulk to put some extra counters on it to give it some beef. That way you can more reliably attack with it and not have to worry about it. Maybe even get around Walking Ballista a little bit. And even Voice of Zendik- Nissa Voice of Zendikar will put some extra counters on it. I mean, if you think about it, if you can just play Glinsley Siphon or Winding Constrictor and start pumping out plus one, plus one counters with Nissa, I mean, the game, the game is, the game's going to end real quick. And, uh, you know, Wurska Pima Outrider, or Pima Renegade, I think I already called it the wrong card name a couple times, is a huge part of what this deck is trying to do. Letting you cast all of your spells and kind of dump your hand out really quickly is going to be really amazing in the deck. And I think that when you look at this and look at what the deck's trying to do, Rishka Pima Renegade is a huge, huge part of it. I mean, all three of the decks, even if you go to the fourth, the third place one, are all playing the cart. And the reason that they're doing it is kind of a little bit different from each other, but it's doing Verderous Gear Hulk Impressions when you have a Winding Constrictor in play. It's just a very powerful synergy. One of the things that you'll notice about this deck is it's playing Ether Harvester. So it has this, uh, it has a way to kind of avoid getting Wrath. It has a way to, uh, well not avoid getting Wrath, but kind of recover from Wraths, if you will, as a, some staying power against aggro decks by giving the card Lifelink. The other deck you'll see chose to go with Heart of Kirin and a little bit more Planeswalkers, giving this deck also that ability. One of the things you'll notice missing from the first place deck list is it has nothing to really play around a Wrath Effect. If somebody decided that they wanted to play a Planar Cleansing or, uh, you know, you know any kind of effect like that, this deck would be in big trouble. And I think that the other decks don't suffer from that as much. Now, what this deck does is it goes bigger. It's bigger, it's got flying, it has a lot of things that it's trying to do. The other thing that you'll notice about... The the first two decks is their choice to play Tireless Tracker. This lets you recoup some of that card advantage if you ever get into a situation like that. And that is one thing that I think that the person playing, you know, Brennan, really decided that he wanted in that card. Um, and that's a pretty big deal. Uh, Walking Ballista, you know, is kind of some wrath protection and letting you get some ability out of your creatures before they go and things like that. Uh, tr- you know, but I think that the main thing that I want to focus on here is the cores of the decks. You know, three Fatal Push, three Grasp of Darkness, Riska Pima Renegade, Winding Constrictor, uh, Tireless Tracker, Verderous Gear Hulk, Walking Ballista. All of these decks 
Every single one of them played Walking Ballista. Every single one of them played Verdurous Gear Hulk. Every one of them played Fatal Push. Every one of them played Grasp of Darkness. Every one of them played Rishka Pima Renegade. And every one of them played Winding Constrictor. So if you're going to build a composite deck list out of these decks, those are some of the starting points that you would want. And I think that as we go into next week, somebody will kind of take a look at all of these decks, mash them together, and find what might work best. And that's really important. You know, when you look at the third place deck list, you'll see Heart of Cairn, right? He decided that he wanted to go a little bit bigger this way, too. You know, he plays more Planeswalkers. He plays creatures like uh, Catacomb Sifter that can crew it, you know, more elitely with the token. He plays the maximum number of Verdurous Gear Hulks. Uh, you know, he plays Sylvan Advocate, which later in the game can crew it. All of, He plays the maximum number of Rishkarpim Renegades, which also help you crew it. And that is a decision that he made in his deck building. One of the huge things when you're looking at week one decks is not really what deck should I buy, but what decks did well, what what ideas can I take from those, and how can I adopt them into my own deck building strategy for my weekly tournament, for my, uh, you know, big tournament. So that is kind of my thoughts on the week one deck of Black Green Delirium. This is a little bit more laid back episode of, uh, you know, uh, Wednesday Night Warrior. I... I've been told by the the viewers that they really like it free-flowing, like this, getting my initial thoughts. Let me know what you think. Leave a comment. I'm excited to do stuff like this. This is my favorite type of video to do, to kind of break down, like, similarities and what you should be looking for. One of the other things that I want to mention before I wrap up is just how different some of these sideboards are. You know, when you, you, you can see that there were lots of different options. You know, I talked a little bit about the first place deck and how, you know, it doesn't have... Wrath Protection, but post-board it, you know, it plays some Planeswalkers and things like that. So these are kind of things that I would want you to look at and adopt when you're trying to make your Black Green Aggro deck. If you have any questions, let me know. If you have any comments, please leave them. And we're excited to see you all next week on Wednesday Night Warrior, and thank you for your time.